Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are happy to welcome Dr. Margaret Taylor, an integrative medical practitioner, board certified through the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine through the AFRA. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. I was honored. You took a bit of an unconventional route to pursuing a career in medicine. Will you share a little bit about your journey? Yes, I did. Um, I went to college and came out with a Bachelor of Arts in Comparative Literature, which I had enjoyed very much, uh, but realized that there's not a direct path to how do you make a living with that. So I cycled back around and got a Master of Arts in Teaching and went to work teaching high school which I did for about five years. Then I thought, well, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Even though I enjoyed teaching, there are challenges. And it was the 1980s. So I went to B school, which was a very popular thing to do in the 1980s. I got my MBA, Master of Business Administration. And after that, I went to work for a large corporation in Memphis, Tennessee. And I enjoyed the work. I worked there for 10 or 15 years. Um, I was a thing called a program management advisor. I worked with a lot of different people across different groups coordinating big projects. It was challenging. I got to travel. I met a lot of people that I still know as friends. Um, but eventually I started thinking this is just not fulfilling enough. I want something that feels more like a calling and not so much a job. So I kind of resurrected a long suppressed dream and at the ripe old age of 40 I took the plunge wow. and went to medical school. Um, I, this is something I could never have done without the support and encouragement of my husband who is awesome and my family. So there I am at 40 um, I went to the University of Tennessee College of Medicine and graduated, did a family practice residency in, in Newport News, Virginia, and then went on to do a geriatric fellowship at the University of Tennessee Medical Center in Knoxville. And I thought, I have definitely found my calling. So having uh, finished up in geriatrics, I was very fortunate to get a job working with a group of geriatricians in Fayetteville, Arkansas area. Um, we saw only patients over the age of 65. And basically it was a Medicare practice. We did hospital, we did nursing home, we did clinic. And I really loved it. I thought we did a lot of good for our patients, but I came to realize that there was a group of patients that we really weren't helping. There were people who would come and ask me, what about nutrition? You know, what should I eat? What vitamins should I take? Should I even take vitamins? Um, is there a different way to manage my cholesterol or do I have to take a statin? Um, is there something natural I could do for this blood pressure? And especially there was a group of women, obviously postmenopausal, who were very interested in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Well, at this point, the official stance was no. Um, my group felt like that postmenopausal women shouldn't be on hormones, that that was just the safest thing. Um, I did talk to the other female physician in the group, and we had mixed feelings about this because we could see that women on hormones felt better, looked better, and were better. But yet, it didn't match up with the official guidelines. And then I had these women who would come in and they would be put on hormones by somebody else and they would come in and say, could you just refill my prescription? So I did a little bit of that and it was a new experience calling compounding pharmacies and trying to get the hang of, of how this was done. And I realized, oh, if I'm going to do this, I better learn something about it. <laughs> <laughs> and about the same time, I became aware of the A4M and I signed up to go to the BHRT symposium that was in San Francisco. Well, I'm not sure what I was expecting. 
um, maybe a room with 30 or 60 people in it listening to lectures. I was blown away um, at the number of people who were there, at the energy that was there. I was just like, this is a happening. We don't have a clue <laughs> in Northwest Arkansas. I have got to learn more about this. So I met Pam Smith and she helped me to verbalize what I was feeling, which is that it was rekindling my passion for medicine and that I just had to learn more. So I went to the Module 1, which was in Orlando. Um, early on, I went ahead and took the oral and the written exams. Um, got that out of the way, I guess. And I realized after Module 1, I wasn't going to be able to stop. But <laughs> it was a new passion for me. Um, I took Module 2, um, the Advanced Cardio um, Module, and I went back to my practice in Fayetteville and tried to start integrating this into a standard Medicare practice. The patients were pretty delighted. My partners, not so much. They, um, they weren't mad or anything. They just didn't see the point. Um, I thought they would embrace it. You know, I thought they would um, realize that Medicare actually does pay for advanced lipid testing and that they would all start doing it. But really, they just weren't interested in making those changes. And it got harder and harder to, because I had more patients that wanted that kind of medicine. Um, harder and harder to integrate that into a conventional Medicare practice. So since I was reaching a certain age, I decided to retire. And I did. Um, I retired from medicine. It, it didn't last long. And I had a friend, a physician, who's also board certified in family practice who does acupuncture um, on Tuesday and Thursday, and he said, hey doc, why don't you come occupy my clinic on Monday and Wednesday, and you can see patients and do your kind of medicine, and I'll do them on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll share patients, it'll be great. So after about four months of retirement, I did come out um, and go into practice um, in a very small way, just seeing a few patients a day. I didn't market, um, word just kind of got around, and I've been doing it ever since. I call the practice Ageless Arkansas because I like the implications for uh, being healthy at any age and that aging is really more a factor of your health and not so much chronological years. But I was able to relax and sort of let it grow organically and continue my learning with the A4M and meet with patients wherever they are in their health journey so it wasn't all hormones and advanced lipid testing. I got a lot of GI cases that challenged me. And it seems to me that the patients are getting more and more complex. And I don't know whether that's because being there brings them out and they come to see me or if they're just getting more complicated. Um, recently, I took the plunge and started testing for and seeing patients for SEERS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, which is this whole new category and challenge that affects so many of our sicker patients. Right. So I haven't expanded to full time, but I am up to three days a week. Yeah, yeah. And you're here at the uh, World Congress in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and you're taking yet another module. It's actually a retake. I'm oh, taking module okay. five again because they evolve these modules and bring them up to date with all the latest learning. And um, it's really very different than when I took it before. Right. Are you um, taking any others like in peptides or any of those? Yes, um, I did the peptide certification because once again I came to the very first workshop and was blown away. This is brand new stuff. It's amazing. Um, I took it back cautiously to Fayetteville, Arkansas mm -hmm. and tried everything out on myself and my husband, he's my guinea pig quite a bit realized what these peptides can do and began to introduce them to patients for their different needs. And that has been a very nice addition to patient services. And it's something that nobody else is doing in the area. Right. So what would your advice be to uh, a practitioner who's perhaps just discovered AFRM, they've come to a general session, they're interested, so they're, they're looking for a little bit more information. Um, and, and, you know, how to go about making the transition from traditional to uh, integrative functional anti-aging medicine? 
I guess there are as many ways to do it as there are people. Right. Um, I've told you how I did it, which right. was, it was kind of a gradual process. And, um, but eventually I took the leap. You know, I had to cut the ties with insurance-based medicine and go out on my own. Uh, I was cushioned from some of that shock because I didn't have to feed my family with it. Um, so people are going to have to follow their heart. Definitely talk to the professors here. They can, they're amazing sources of information, wisdom, and insight. And then you're going to have to follow your own heart. Yeah, it, it, but it sounds like you're much happier practicing. Oh, it's awesome. Way. I have fun every day. Yeah. Um, it's challenging, and sometimes I worry, like, am I going to be able to help this patient? Um, but sometimes I just need to fall back and review some things, call some people, get on Ask the Professor, and I can find support. And um, I find that I am able to offer patients something they're not getting anywhere else. It really is very fulfilling. Nice. Well, yours is a very inspiring story, and thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you for asking me.